ahead and start. This is Alex from Indeed. Um, so he's done some cool stuff in AI and natural language processing in the back of the um, an engineer at Google. But today he's going to be talking about SQL, no SQL, but then a third option that is the minimal perfect hash MPH. So he's going to tell you all about it because I know nothing. So I'll let him take it away. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, and there goes all of my intro, but I'll just okay. say it anyway. Uh, I'm Alex Shin from the Software Engineer at Indeed. Uh, and I'm talking about MPH, uh, a key value store based on minimal perfect hashing. And I'll explain a little bit what that means later, but the important thing to remember is that it's a uh, read-only key value store. So I'm going to go through and talk about the... Uh, can everyone hear me? Sorry. It's soft. It's soft. A little louder. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about... Um, the use cases for this, uh, and then talk about the implementation, and conclude with some benchmarks. So I help people get jobs. Didn't see the shirt. Um, Indeed is the number one job site worldwide, uh, with uh, 200 million unique monthly visitors in uh, more than 60 countries and 29 languages. It's not the sales pitch. You can get that at our booth downstairs. Uh, this is just to emphasize that uh, we're a global company. Uh, we want to serve uh, our users uh, worldwide uh, very fast response times, which means web servers near them, and those web servers need to be talking to backend services in the same da data center. And with that comes the problem of data distribution scale. We're pushing a lot of data back and forth between our data centers. Uh, we have a lot of different types of data we distribute. Uh, the search index itself, our job recommendations, ranking models, company reviews, uh, all kinds of statistics, uh, the deployables themselves, and tons of logging. Uh, and, all, and all of these have different uh, ways that we store them. The typical solution is going to be, you usually ask SQL or NoSQL. Um, both are fine with uh, different pros and cons. SQL is a single point of failure. Uh, NoSQL can have some synchronization issues. Uh, we use both of these, in fact. Uh, but I want to talk about an alternative today which is to ship the data directly to the consumers. Not a new idea, but often overlooked. <coughs> so what we're doing is we're giving each client a local read-only copy of the data. Uh, this gives very low latency. You can MMAP or load it directly into memory. Uh, you're not accessing any external services. Uh, it's simple and robust. Uh, no writes think functional programming. There's no moving parts, so nothing can break uh, in production. And if you do need to update the data, you can uh, just push a new copy, uh, either ad hoc or with a regular schedule. Uh, so read-only key value store. Uh, the priorities for this uh, is that the data must be small. We want to minimize network usage, disk usage, and uh, uh, memory usage. It's, you can't push around terabytes every minute. Uh, read time must be fast. It doesn't help to save in the network if we're spending all our time in CPU but the write time is less of a concern. It's a write once, read many times scenario. So how do we build a key value store? Pretty much everything is going to boil down to some kind of tree or some kind of hash table. Uh, trees tend to be uh, more compact, uh, but incur a login lookup. You might need to hit disk multiple times. Uh, hash tables will take a little more space, but are faster. Um, your file system will usually be a tree. Uh, something like GDBM is a hash table. Data, SQL databases will use a mix of both. So our solution today is based on hash tables. So what is a hash table? It's a, a table based on the hash function, which will take the key and produce a, a deterministic, uh, but ideally random value. Um, multiple keys might hash to the same value, so you need some kind of collision uh, resolution. Uh, <coughs> and you might uh, have empty buckets. So a perfect hash table is a hash table where there are no collisions. Uh, now, by definition, this can only be done when you know all the keys in advance. Right? So this is only possible for a read-only table. Um, the kind of e easy way to get a perfect hash function would be to use a cryptographic hash. Um, so you can take an MD5 sum but then you can't realistically build a table with an index for every MD5 some value. Uh, you, so ideally you want a perfect hash table that uh, maps to a smaller range of numbers. And the holy grail is the minimal perfect hash table. 
where the end keys are mapped exactly to the numbers 0 to n minus 1, no collisions. Uh, so perfect storage, you're guaranteed one single seek. Uh, generating these, table, uh, these hash functions is kind of complicated, uh, but there's been good research in this in recent years involving uh, solving graph problems. Uh, and there are libraries to do this for you uh, in linear time. Uh, now that'll give you a hash function, but uh, you want to store this on disk somehow. And so uh, <coughs> what's, if, if the data itself, if all the key values are fixed width, you can um, just access them directly. You can use the hash function and scale that by the size of the key values to look up that offset, uh, but more often they're going to be variable width, so you need a separate table of offsets to index into that. Uh, you'll notice here that the, uh, the metadata, this is the hash function itself, uh, the techniques, techniques we use to generate these perfect hash functions uh, are not constant sized hash functions, but in fact scale with the number of keys, uh, but only at the, about two bits per key, so compared to the rest of our data this is pretty negligible. Um, one problem with this is if you have, yes, you can't hear, okay, um, sorry. Um, now one problem with this is, okay, is this better? Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Hi. Uh, right. So uh, with this, um, if your key values are, are very small, then the offset table here can be a significant uh, size of the index. Um, so we also try another approach here, which is instead of an offset table, we have a bit vector. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're storing a one in the start bit uh, corresponding to each byte in the data file. Uh, of where each entry starts. And then, so if you want to, if you get a hash value k and you want to find out where the kth uh, item starts, and you can find, you can look up where the kth bit is in this bit vector. And there exist uh, data structures and algorithms to compute this in constant time. Uh, so what, and what we do is then we'll consider the size with an offset table and the size of this bit index uh, and use the smaller one. This has an upper bound of one eighth the size of the data itself. So the benefits of, of this approach, uh, as mentioned, so there's no collision handling. Uh, so we get optimal storage to begin with, uh, and you're guaranteed a single seek. Uh, you can get the hash, look up the offset, and read directly from that one location. Uh, you also don't need to verify the key. Right, so we're talking about a fixed set of keys that we knew in advance, and if you're looking up a key that you know was in that set, uh, you just you can just compute the hash, get the offset, and read the value. So we might not even need to store the key in the table. Um, we can also probabilistically use it. So if you're if you're not storing the keys and you look up a, a key that wasn't in the original set, uh, it's just going to get a hash. It's going to resolve to some value. Um, it's a false positive. But you could use something like a bloom filter uh, to filter in advance. And in fact, we can do better than a bloom filter. We can store a signature of the original key uh, with the data. Uh, <clears throat> and so say we store a 10-bit signature. Uh, you then look that up. Uh, you compute the same signature for the key you're retrieving. And if they match, uh, it was the you assume it was the original key. That would be, for 10 bits, a 1 in 1024 probability of uh, false positive, which is a much better rate for the same number of bits you would get in a bloom filter. Uh, you can also uh, incidentally use the same technique to build a better uh, bloom filter for any static set of keys. Uh, and the implicit compression, so we might have a very large key space, long strings, uh, and these, these are now all compressed down to the numbers 0 to n minus 1. If we want to rep reference those keys from some other table or data structure, we can just store that hash value. Um, and so the results. This is the, this is the results from the first uh, table we switched to this in production. Um, 
there's not a lot of solutions that are aiming at this exact uh, immutable uh, <coughs> approach, but um, the, so this is kind of a grab bag, but we're looking at SQLite. Uh, and I did say earlier we're looking at non-SQL solutions, but uh, SQLite is a library that ma maintains a single file on disk, and it's perfectly suitable for pushing to your consumers. Um, we are looking at our in-house uh, LSM trees, those are log structured merge trees, um, and LevelDB, another open source uh, LSM tree solution. The hash tables are described here. Uh, DiscoDB, which is another uh, minimal proof hash based solution that I found after implementing this. And uh, TinyCDB, which is a non-perfect uh, hash table. And so the data, you, uh, you can just consider these clusters. This is what we're working with. Uh, we've got hash uh, values, 8-byte hashes, mapped to a cluster of items. Uh, these are all 80-bit integers. They're actually stored as th base 32 strings, 16 bytes each. Uh, the first table is the map from the hash to the cluster of items. And there's this auxiliary table, which is a map back from the items to the uh, <coughs> cluster. And so for the first table, the hash to items, uh, we can see that uh, the trees, as expected, are, are more compact, but the middle perfect hash table um, is in line with the general storing this as, as text. Uh, an important aspect of the, both of the Indeed solutions is we allow uh, plug -in, uh, pluggable serializers. So you don't have to store it as raw text. Uh, we can, for instance, store the uh, eight byte hashes as eight byte uh, binary longs. Uh, we do that automatically for SQLite as well. And for um, for the items, uh, instead of the base 32-bit integers, we can store this as 80-bit uh, uh, binary values. Uh, and if you can apply both of those, uh, the MPH tables are smallest, uh, even smaller than our own trees using the same serialization. Uh, this, for the second table, um, this is where it gets really dramatic because uh, we're going to, even without the additional optimizations, MPH is smallest. But uh, if you can omit the keys, right? So in the second table, I'll just jump back up. This is the reverse lookup from the uh, items back to their hashes. Uh, if we, we don't have to store the items in this table. So we can just get the, retrieve the hash and then look back up in the previous table whether that item was really one of those uh, hash clusters. So we can emit the key um, and cut our size in half. Uh, and we can go further. So this is uh, pointing to the, uh, uh, the hashes which had a minimal perfect hash function. So that compresses down to four bytes. Uh, for the zero minus n one uh, storage, so this is suddenly um, one tenth the size of anything else. Really dramatic reduction. Uh, and then the next thing we're concerned with is the read time. Um, so here, the hash, all the hash-based solutions are fastest. Uh, MPH was fastest of all. Uh, this is the times for reading from the two different tables. For write performance, this is less of a concern for us, but again, both of the Indeed solutions were pretty competitive. Um, and in summary, um, it's smaller and faster. Uh, if you can use an immutable solution, you should try it out. So we've open sourced this, uh, it's on GitHub. Uh, there's a link to a blog that has some more details about the implementation. The library is in Java, but also has a command line API. Uh, you can just so you can just try it out without any coding. Uh, any questions? Yes. Um, so you mentioned CDB, and as far as I'm aware, CDB has a limitation where you can't have a database as large than 4 gigabytes. Yes. Uh, so because up to 32 bit, uh, you know, use 32 bits in the implementation. Is there some right, limitation? Or? No, there's there's no limitation. Um, I've I've tested this with. Um, 
more than 4 billion keys and up to around 10 gig files, you could probably do larger. If you want to do much larger, you're going to probably want a sharded solution. Um, and actually, we had to leave off uh, TinyCDB from the right benchmarks. Uh, it was writing really fast, but it was uh, not generating a valid table. Uh, so the limit is 4 gigs, but uh, above thir 3 gigs, we're getting data loss. Uh, yes. Uh, so, how long does it take for you, uh, for you to generate the perfect hash table for like a billion keys? For a billion? Um, it sounds like it would be a. Uh, uh, four billion, I think. Four billion, uh, like, uh, max plus one was about uh, an hour. Okay, so not too bad. Um, the minimal pref ha the hash function generation is very fast. Uh, all the bottleneck is in the uh, serialization of disk. Yeah, uh, this was actually user clusters in this case. Um, we use it for job recommendations. Um, you can use it for anything. It's really good for machine learning type uh, models. You can store the feature vector, the feature values uh, without even storing the feature keys and just leave them out probabilistically. Yes? Um, is it possible to do better? I'm just, just wondering, like, because um, you know, using, like, more, you just mentioned that you're already using like, you know, zeros and ones and you're using I'm assuming rank and select using that. Yeah, rank and select. With, you mentioned constant. Um, so, is it possible to do better by using techniques like that in other places? Like, are there any, you know, avenues for improvement? Uh, I don't know any low hanging fruit to improve on this, but I'm sure you can find something. Yes. For the benchmark, uh, how many records uh, are you testing this with? This one, I, I think this was um, 50 million. <laughs> So the uh, size, uh, this is megabytes, so it's, these are three gig tables. You see pretty much the same thing. I, I tried uh, you know, one, one through uh, 10 gigs, it's pretty consistent. Thanks.